corruption, it is raised in incorruption. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So there it is. I mean, Jesus said the dead would be raised. Several of the apostles said, be absurd to speak as if this wasn't going to happen. But this is not what this particular text is talking about. One of the problems with that idea is it kind of like gives you the impression that he's eventually going to be in you. Like in that day, then the spirit comes into you and then you're raised from the dead. See, this isn't true because the spirit's in you now. Amen. He's working in you now. He gives life to you now. He's dwelling in you now. So let's not take liberty to say things that God did not say. What is being talked about here is your mortal body is being quickened and being brought into service to God. That's the thing being talked about here. The idea being presented to us is how our members are no longer used as a means to express sin, but rather used as a tool to show the righteousness that is, in fact, in you. That's the result of the spirit dwelling in you. It says you have quickened your body. Amen. Now, this is a very interesting word. While the virgins say give life, I really do like this particular expression. You quicken your mortal bodies. The word quicken, the total definition means make alive, vivify, or revive, resuscitate, as from the dead or an inanimate state. That's what the word quicken means. Now, this is not the only place in Scripture where it says the Spirit quickens. Here are some other Scriptures that affirm this truth, that it's the Spirit that quickens. John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are the Spirit, and they are life. 1 Peter three eighteen, For Christ also hath suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So it's clear that the quickening is done through the Spirit, but it also says, in a scripture mentioned before, God and Christ are also associated with quickening. They do so through the Spirit. Again, this is the resurrection life of Christ we're talking about. This is something that's happened in all believers. It says in Ephesians 2, 1, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. He's saying that to all believers. From one point of view, this, our spirits have been given life. This is true. It says in Romans 8.10, Christ being you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit's life because of righteousness. The spirit in that text is not really talking about the human spirit, but rather the Holy Spirit himself. Our spirits have been given life, but it's been done by his spirit. Amen. He did give life to our spirits. However, in this particular text, we're going to look at the body itself being quickened, that being our mortal bodies. Let's focus our attention on that. Our mortal bodies. Right here we see the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in our bodies. When it says our mortal bodies, it's talking about our physical ones. The word mortal actually means subject to death or destined to die. That's what it means. Uh, the, work, the Greek word here was translated liable to death, and the other translations translate this. The Amplified says perishable bodies. Young's literal translation says dying bodies, and while James Murdoch New Testament says dead bodies. And that's referring to Romans 8, 10, where it says the body is dead because of sin. That's where that came from. And even Paul referred to his body as the body of this death in Romans 7, 24. Amen. Now, until we die or the Lord comes and transforms us, you're confined to these bodies, these dying bodies. Mm -hmm. Now, Romans 8, 10 just established that our bodies are dead because of sin if Christ dwells in us. But it continues to say if the Spirit dwells in us, that our bodies are quickened. Now, what exactly does it mean? What does it mean for your mortal bodies to be quickened? Well, obviously, you have life in you. The Spirit has given you that life and actually sanctifies the rest of your body where it can be brought into full service to God. Here's some thoughts from the Scriptures concerning this. The scriptures say your bodies are temples. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know that you not that you are the temple of God and that, ye, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. 1 Corinthians 6.18-19 says flee fornication. For every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? That's the Bible says your temples. What kind of temples? Your own? Your own temple? It's not even your own. Te it's not even your temple. It's God's temple. It says you belong to somebody else. The body belongs to God, and therefore it's used to do His will. When Jesus died for our sins, it says he purchased us with his blood. 1 Corinthians 6.20 affirms this truth. For you are brought, bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. When it says bought you, you don't, suppo you don't suppose that he just purchased a part of you, do you? 
The scriptures affirm it. The body and the spirit are God's. Our bodies are indeed dying. We are going to get new ones in the last day. But while we are in these fleshly bodies, God has made provision for them to be used for his glory. Our bodies have actually become tools in expressing the life that is in us. However, it was not always that way. The body at one time could only express sin because you were dead. Now the very thing that was used as a tool to express sin can now be used as a tool to express righteousness. Romans 6, 12 to 13. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye shall obey in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Romans later in that chapter, verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the affirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Do not be deceived, however. You're still struggling with your sinful nature. If you give the flesh any opportunity to express itself, then your, your body has the capacity to express that sin. However, we're supposed to, it says we're to crucify the old man. Walk in the spirit. This is what we're told to do. So this particular text comes in mind. For ye live, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. When it speaks of your members, it is speaking of the body itself. Paul reminds the people that they are not under the obligation, un, any under obligation to obey the law of sin. The body is no longer obligated to express carnal desires to the flesh. So he says, don't let it reign in your mortal body. Don't give it place to express itself. Amen. Put it away and let the spirit dwell. Walk in the spirit so you might not feel the lust of the flesh. Showing that there's better things to be used for your body now that it's been quickened by the spirit. Now that there's been life given to it, you can use it for something else other than sinning. It is not possible for the spirit to dwell in you and your bodies not be quickened. Although the body is technically your enemy, it can still be brought into submission if you walk in the spirit. Here is a word from Paul on the matter of the body being used to serve the Lord. Philippians 1.20, according to my earnest expectation of my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. To magnify means to make great in representation or to extol. Even your members although destined to die, can be used to bring glory to God. So at this point, I want to draw your attention to some verses that really expound on this matter of the body, paying tribute to the Lord. Whether it be your hands, tongue, or feet, they can all be used for God. All these texts I'm going to be sure are actually from the Psalms, and they are very excellent examples of what's being ministered in this text. Psalm 66, 17 says, I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Psalm 89 verse 1 says, I will sing of the mercy of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 109 30 says, I will praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude. Amen. Psalm 35 28 says, My tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Psalm 63 4. Thus I will bless thee while I live. I lift up my hands in thy name. Psalm 119 48. My hands also I lift unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Psalm 18.33, He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon high, upon high places. Psalm 119.59, I thought on my ways, and turned my feet to thy testimonies. And the last one from Psalm 25.15, Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the, night, out of the net. And here's examples how the body is brought into service to God. I have one more point, sorry to make, a couple more, concerning the main part of this text. It says, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So he'll quicken 